Did you know that you could use noise to generate infinitely procedural terrain like in Minecraft, or even generate entire planets and solar systems like in No Man's Sky? You can use it to build realistic 3D scenes with mountains, trees, and clouds like Inigo Quiles does in his Raymarched Landscape Shader. Needless to say, understanding noise is essential for game developers. And in this GLSL shader tutorial, we will learn and implement a specific type of smooth noise called value noise. But before we get started, I'm going to ask for one small favor from you guys, and that is for you to add some value to my noise by hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm. All right, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the algorithm for generating value noise. In order to create value noise, we need to first create white noise. Then we can divide that white noise into a grid. And then we can determine the edges of the cells of each grid and perform bilinear interpolation to get something that looks like this. The grid looks a little rougher on the edges, so we can just smooth it out by using smooth step. And then we can also add a couple of layers of noise with different amplitudes to give it a more natural feel. And that's all there is to it. It's a pretty straightforward algorithm. So let's jump into the code. So as with all of the GLSL shader tutorials, we're only going to worry about the main function right here. And of course, I've set up the UV coordinates as well, which goes between zero and one on the X axis and zero and one on the Y axis. So here I'm setting the color to zero and I am setting the GL frag color variable here all the way at the bottom, which is why you're seeing on the right side of the screen a completely black screen. So for example, if I were to change this to one and save the file, you'll see that it turns to white. So essentially, we're going to go step by step and update this function until we get a full version of value noise. Now the first step of the value noise function is to create white noise. So I've created a white noise function, which takes in the UV coordinate and spits out a float. Now we can convert this float into a VEC3 and set that to be the color. And so I've called this white noise function 2x1 because it takes a VEC2 and returns a float. And here, what we're gonna do is return p.x. What we're saying is essentially just return zero to one based on the X axis. Now you could create your own white noise function. I've tried to do that and I have not been successful. So you can just find a nice little white noise function from the internet and use that as a basis for our program. And here I found one, this is just a generic white noise function and you can replace this with something better. Now, after generating the noise function, we want to create a grid overlay. To do that, we're gonna first want to multiply the UV coordinates by some number, so say two. And essentially what that does is instead of having it from zero to one, it's gonna make the X value from zero to two and same with the Y values. And once we do that, we can also take the fract of that, which will end up looking like this. It goes from zero to one here and zero to one again, and that's what the fract function does. So if I wanted to, just for example's sake, I can use UV equals UV times four, and we would expect there to be four in the X axis and four in the Y axis. Essentially, this is how we're going to be able to generate our grid. And we're also gonna to want to get the corners of this grid. All we're gonna do is take the floor. And then with that floor, we can do like plus one on the X axis, plus one on the Y axis, and then plus one on the X and Y axis to get the right top and top right corners of that grid. And so if I set the color like this, you'll see that you know we're sort of generating the grid. Essentially, this part of the step is just creating that grid overlay that we're gonna use for the next part of the algorithm. And what we have to do is take the bottom left and the bottom right and the top left and the top right corners and linearly interpolate between them based on the return value of the white noise function. First, we're just gonna start off with the bottom side. And what we're saying here is take the bottom left, which is just the grid ID, because that just floors the UV coordinates on each cell. So for example, if you're in any point here, then you'll get this value. If you're in any point here, you'll get this value at the bottom left. And then to get the bottom right, all we need to do is add one 
to the x coordinate here. And we're going to pass both of those into the white noise function. And then we're going to perform a linear interpolation based on the grid UV, which you know goes from 0 to 1 here and 0 to 1 here and 0 to 1 here. So in here, right, if we are maybe like halfway between the left and the right corners, then we would assume this to be like, you know, if this was black and this was white, this would be some form of gray. And, you know, you can sort of see that happening here. And we're going to essentially do the same thing for the top left and the top right, except this time, you know, we're going to add one in the y direction. And so we add those, pass those into our white noise function. And then we linearly interpolate there. This will actually give a very similar sort of result. And the last step would be to linearly interpolate between both the bottom and the top based on the grid UV Y coordinate. Then we'll finally get something that looks sort of like noise. But as you can tell, there's a little bit of roughness around the edges, so let's smooth that out. What we want to do is instead of linearly interpolate based on uh, the UV coordinates going from 0 to 1, we want to make the UV coordinates more smooth. And there's turns out there's a really easy way to do that. And before we perform these mix functions based on the grid UV X and the grid UV Y, we can just smooth out the grid UV itself with a smooth step. And that will essentially get rid of these rough edges. As you can see, now the grid is going between 0 and 1 in a more smooth fashion, and that's why uh, the rough edges are also gone. And so that's basically it for the value noise function, but another thing that you might want to do is to add multiple layers on top of it to make it uh, feel like actual noise, because right now it still looks kind of boxy. So what you can do is create a function that sort of has all of this in it, because you don't want to repeat that code all that time. So I set up a function called value noise fn, and all it really does is does the exact same thing that we talked about in this entire video. And once we do that, what we can do is layer different levels of noise on top of it. So we're going to first have the base level with UV times 4. Then we can have another level with UV times 8. But this time, let's decrease the importance of this value noise. Then we can also have UV with 16 and decrease it even more and, you know, keep going like that. If we keep going like this forever, you know, we'll have value noise that's about like twice as bright as it should be. So we can just divide that value noise by two. And then if I save that, you'll see that we actually get like some decently looking noise. If I do UV plus equals time, then, you know, you can see here that the value noise is moving. And yeah, that's going to be it for today. Uh, hopefully now you guys have a better understanding of how value noise works. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.